It's Friday here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We've got Josh Taylor from KDKA Pittsburgh. We're going to be getting you ready for Steelers Raiders and a key matchup that Matt Canada has to exploit if he's going to do anything right this week. That and all of our week three picks here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. As I said before, we're rejoined by my man. Josh Taylor, you can hear him on, you can see him on KDK TV, hear him on 93.7 The Fan. He does all the things in Pittsburgh. We're so glad to have him back. Josh, full disclosure, you had your second child, Jocelyn. I got to meet her on camera just a little bit before the show. It was wonderful to meet you, but that's why we'd be giving you a break, but we're happy to have you back on the rotation, sir. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was good to get her in front of the camera. She's starting to get to the point where she's, you can like, she can see a mirror and she's starting to look at cameras and she, <laughs> like, she realizes when she knows she's supposed to smile, she's figuring it out. She didn't, she didn't bust in crawling like my son did on one of the previous episodes <laughs> a while back. Funny. So yeah, he, he made his entrance, you know, forcefully. She was a little bit more gradual, but one of these days I'm sure she'll probably break it at one point and make it completely awkward for me. So it, it'll be well, about it- any time. It was awkward for Matt Canada this week when there were people chanting fire Canada and it was pretty loud and he was addressed by Steelers media Thursday. I was not on hand. I was handling my pit duties to, on, on, at that time. But I have to say that this is, again, the hoopla around Matt Canada. And listen, it's justified. The offense is still bad. But as I've talked about on this show, I don't think it's 100 percent on Matt Canada. I even don't think it's even 50 percent on Matt Canada. I think right now there's a lot of execution basics that aren't being used here by the Steelers. The offensive line isn't doing well in run blocking or pass blocking at this point. Kenny Pickett isn't seeing the open guys even when they do do well. Uh, it hasn't been consistent for anybody on offense, and it's been tough to point a finger at someone that's been consistently pr- uh, productive for the offense, and that's led to issues. But Josh, I got one key solution that the Steelers better achieve this week against a Raiders defense that got shredded by the Bills last week. And look, the Bills are the Bills. They got Josh Allen. They know who who they are. It's not like uh, you know that it, that's it's it's not a, it's not a, a, a terrible thing that they that they got shredded by the Bills. But the fact is, there is a uh, there is, there is a there is a, a stat there that there is something to look at there. And one thing I look at as far as what uh. You know what 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 needs to happen for this upcoming season is the Steelers have to take advantage of the middle part of the field with the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders right now, their top linebacker is Robert Spillane, a guy the Steelers know very well. He has uh, he he played for the Steelers for multiple years, good run stuffer, but everyone knows that, if, that his biggest liability was in coverage and the Raiders so far this year have given up 109 yards and a touchdown on fifth on 18 targets, allowing 15 catches in just two games to the tight end position. The Steelers barely got Pat Frymuth involved in this last game against the Browns. He got, he did catch a touchdown in the blowout loss to the Niners. They have to make him a factor in this game. Him and Kenny Pickett's connection have to shine through Josh. Do you see like this as a, a way to get this going? Is that in this maybe to be a key to ignite the Steelers offense finally? If anything, we got that clue from Mike Tomlin during his press conference. One of the things he talked about with the offense, he talked about them needing to get their mojo back and start a little bit smoother, but he also talked about, you know, and this was something specific that he said. He said we need to anticipate this the schematics of the other team. And what I take that is, okay, we got to do better at game planning how to exploit the other team's weaknesses. And he talked about Robert Spillane earlier in his press conference about, hey, hell, we're, we're familiar with Rob. We know what he's done. We're happy for him. He's doing a great job out there. But the only thing he didn't say is we also know how to beat him. And if when you have a guy that you know how to beat and you're telling your offensive coordinator, we need to anticipate what the other team is doing a lot better and be able to exploit it, this is as good of an opportunity as any to take the chance at beating a guy or at least one guy on a roster 
that you know how to beat and that you know how to exploit. This is this is it right here. This is one of those. It's a free appetizer. It, it's a bonus track. This mm-hmm. is in front of you. Take this for what it is and take W if you're able to do it. And I think you're right. I think in using Pat Fryermuth is one of those ways to exploit um, Robert Spillane. I, I'll I'll see you at Pat Fryermuth. And I'll raise you our guy. And you know who I mean by our guy. And shout out to JB on Twitter. This is a game where you need to see Darnell Washington too. This is a Absolutely. game where I want to see I want to see two tight ends. I want to see 12 personnel. Not only for the sake of getting Pat Fryermuth involved, but I want to see 12 personnel for the sake of getting the run game involved. We talk about manipulating the middle of the field. What's a good way to do that? Get your run game going. And then open up the play action game, which could open up opportunities for Pat Fryer move. So how about we use a little bit of Darnell Washington, whether it's on the left or right side, I don't care, but have him push a body somewhere to free up space for someone, whether it's Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, I don't care. Have him push a body to give space for his insert running back here to get space and then open up passing opportunities for Pat Fryer in the middle of the field. I think it's hand in hand. Now I will say to full disclosure, we were recording this very early on Thursday. That's like like around like three fifty in the afternoon that we're recording this. So the Thursday injury report hasn't come out for the Steelers, but Darnell Washington did miss the Wednesday practice with a knee injury. Uh, but so did several other Steelers miss early practices, including Minka Fitzpatrick, who said he will be available this week when he spoke to when he spoke to media. So maybe there's a chance Darnell Washington could play there, and we'll get into Minka Fitzpatrick later when we specifically look at more keys for this game in the show. But I agree with you. Darnell Washington, Pat Fryermuth, even Connor Hayward, get these guys involved. Same. We heard all yes. training camp. We saw all training camp. How deep this tight end rooms, uh, you know, Leo, look. These guys are playmakers, and it looked like Kenny Pickett even trusted them. And I also say, uh, you know, and this also isn't just on Matt Cannon. It's also on Kenny Pickett. Darnell Washington has been open. Teams yes. haven't been assigning their top cover man to him because you can't because he's the number two tight end and you got so many other issues to take care of. And, like, yeah, get the ball to George Pickens. Get the ball to Pat Fryermuth. But, man, Darnell Washington, it'd be nice to see him get some real chances to make plays this year and just see just how good he can be in an NFL game because I still think he's the guy that can catch the ball and run somebody over. We've seen him flatten Nick Bosa. We've seen him flatten people on the Browns. He's a good blocker, but we know he can be a, a threat with the ball in his hands, and that needs to be another added element to this Steelers offense as well. Yeah, we can't sit here and keep making the same complaint about Matt Canada. Oh, he's got to scheme guys open, and then you get guys open, and your quarterback doesn't throw to him. Mm-hmm. That's your quarterback's job. We can talk about how how offensive court. And by the way, the term "scheme someone open," I'm already tired of it, and we're only at what week three. I'm already sick of the term "scheme someone open." because there have been guys open and they still have not been thrown to. So we might need to throw that one in the bin for now. But the point still stands. Whether it's Darnell Washington, whether it's Pat Fryermuth, Kenny Pickett's going to have opportunities to find one of those two in the middle of the field. And he's got to exploit it. He's got to be able to take advantage of it, especially against a team like you laid out pretty eloquently. They're not good at stopping the tight end. And if there's anybody who should be familiar with facing a defense quite Frequently, that's not good at stopping the tight end. It should be this offense because it's been one of this defense's biggest knocks for a while now that they're not good at stopping tight ends. So if anything, they should be familiar at knowing at least how to exploit her and how to attack it. And now that's where your offensive coordinator comes into play because he has to be the guy that says, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is going to be our game plan, and this is how we're going to accomplish what we want to accomplish. He's got to be able to set that expectation, and then Kenny Pickett has to go out and pick his guy out. Then the offensive line has to give him time to figure out who he's going to pick out and throw the ball to. All of these things have to work in conjunction. Uh, I I used this analogy with somebody earlier in the week that I was talking off air about this. I said, look, look at your offense as a wheel. All, All of your position guys, those are spokes in the wheel. Your quarterback is the one in the middle. He's the one that has to keep it turning. If your quarterback ain't spinning, then the wheel ain't turning. But your offensive coordinator has to know when to replace the tire. He's got to know, hey, you got a tire that needs replaced, or hey, you got to fix this, you got to fix that. All of it comes into play. It's never just one piece. All of it has to be in in sync for the wheel to run effectively, and that's what we're looking at right now, and the expectation couldn't be higher going into this game against Vegas. 
Absolutely. We'll get more into this game shortly, but we got to get to our week three picks here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. We'll do that in just a minute on the other side of this break. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast with Josh Taylor of KDKA TV and 93.7 The Fan. But first, before we go anywhere else, I want to remind you this show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app that you need to, down to download right now because it's the app that you can buy tickets for your favorite events. And buying tick those tickets shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the, is the fast and easy way to get tickets for whether they're Steelers games, Pirates games, Penguins games, when they're back, Pit games, whatever events you want to go to sporting-wise, concerts, comedy, theater, they're going to help you find your tickets available. And these are even up-to-the-minute, last-minute last, last minute deals that you can get and get the best price out there. And if the best price guarantee that can't be beat, get these exclusive flash deals and all these different types of tickets. And the best price guarantee means you'll always get the best price. And if you don't get the best price, if you find tickets to the same event that you're at in the same section and row for less somewhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app and create a code Create an account and use code Locked On NFL, all capital letters, all one word, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Or go to their website, GameTime.co. Terms to get a supply. Create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're also brought to you by DoorDash. If you're missing syrup for your pancakes or just ran out of your favorite coffee creamer with DoorDash grocery delivery, you can get what you want right when you need it. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your, rest your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. Want even more value? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to $20 value when you use code Locked on NFL at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum total, and, and zero delivery fees on your first order when, when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONNFL. Don't forget, that's code LOCKEDONNFL for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Josh Taylor of KDK TV and 93.7 The Fan. Josh, I want to say uh, we got it. We we do have our pick them. Now, I don't think you're in our pick them league, Josh, but we're going to have you make some of the picks. But I will update people on our pick them league. Uh, Jenna Hunter couldn't make it here today because she was just very busy. Stuff happens. They got the, the, the Sunday night. Whenever there's Sunday night football for the Steelers, it's extra work for her because she's on Channel 11. So that's just what they what they do there. But we got Josh to come in here. Uh, an update here. Our, we have one person in our in the lead for our pick them group right now, which includes over 250 people right now. So thank you to everyone who's participating. Steelers in Columbia is 24 and 7, the best record so far as far as picking through week two. And I made it come up. Jenna's still way back at 17 wins. I'm, I'm at 21 and 11 right now. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Looking good right now, tied with six, for 16th place. But I got to give a shout out because, Josh, you weren't, you, didn't, you, you weren't here for this last week. But there was a particular, uh, a, a particular account last week that when they made their picks – and I was looking at the rankings, and I saw that they were ahead of me. It said better than Chris Carter, and I don't know who this person is. They just, they, they just, they just did that, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I see. It's personal." But now this person is even funnier because now that I'm ahead of them, I go and check. I went to find him. Where's that guy? I want to see him. Their title is now worse than Chris Carter. So she oh, fair play. Pulling me out here. Uh, I, I, I appreciate the hustle. So thank you out for all those, and thank you for all those participating. But let's get to the picks this week. A reminder that all the all the odds, lines, and ends that we're going to give you here come from our FanDuel Sportsbook uh, line, lines packages here. Let's start off with uh, some Sunday action here. We always skip Thursday night football, Giants, Niners. That has happened by the time you're, you're listening to this. But let's start off with a game that a lot of Steelers fans are probably going to keep an eye on on Sunday, and that's Titans at Browns. The Browns at home, three-and-a-half-point favorites. The Titans haven't looked great, but they pulled out a win against the Chargers, and this is going to be the first game the Browns have had without Nick Chubb. They signed, they re-signed Kareem Hunt. I'm taking the Titans. I'm sorry. I think that Nick Chubb losing Nick Chubb is a huge blow to what the Browns need this season. And Deshaun Watson is not ready to carry that offense in that way. I, I think they're in for a lot of trouble with the Titans. Yeah, I don't think Jerome Ford or even Kareem Hunt on such short notice for that matter 
they're going to be able to do what Nick Chubb was able to do. Granted, Jerome Ford had a pretty big run against the Steelers. I don't think they replicate that against Tennessee. I'm with you. I'm not sold on Deshaun Watson either if he's able to carry this offense. He did not show anything close to that, especially when he had Amari Cooper, who was a clear matchup problem for the Steelers, and he couldn't exploit it in the second half. I like Tennessee too, plus three and a half. Absolutely. Uh, Moving right along, we got – Another one o'clock game. Chargers at Vikings. Vikings are one and a half point fa- favorites. This is pretty much a pick them right here uh, on the lines. I'm going with the Vikings at home. Uh, yeah. Listen, I, I don't think the Vikings are all that, but they got some serious offensive weapons. And I the Chargers do too. And I like Justin Herbert, but there's something going on there right now. Coach, Coach Staley over there, he is, but he is frustrated. I heard him in his post game presser. He yeah. seemed like he's feeling some heat there. I think the Vikings, they're just going to come for your place. They're going to be at home. I think this is going to be a shootout. If you want, fan, if you're playing daily fantasy sports or anything, pick players in this game because I think both teams are going to put up a lot of points, but I'm going with the Vikings at home. One of these two teams that both made the playoffs last year, one of them is going to be 0-3 by the end of the day, if you can Oof. wrap your mind around that. That either Kirk Cousins or Justin Herbert is going to be leading an 0-3 team, and I think it's going to be Justin Herbert leading an 0-3 team because I'm taking the Vikings. At home, I'm like right, you. I'm, I'm right here with you. The Patriots at the Jets. The Patriots coming into town as a two-and-a-half-point favorite, according to FanDuel. Oh, man, I kind of – even though the Patriots have struggled, I think, what, they're 0-2 as well. Mm. The Jets, man, they got slaughtered by the Cowboys, almost beat the Bills, but I'm going with the Patriots. I think that, the, that Bill Belichick's got something cooked up. I don't think that they, they fall to 0-3 right, right now with, with him as their head coach. I think that they, they've they also come close. They came really close to beating the Eagles in, in, in week one. I think They the did. Jets, they gave Philly a really good game. They they really did. I think the Jets, they're a little beat up from last week in, in that, that Cowboys defense. I think Zach Wilson is going to make some key mistakes in this game, so I'm taking New England. If there's anybody that's able to come up with a defensive game plan to make your offense frustrated, no one does it better than Bill Belichick. That does not change. I think New England gets their first win. I got the I got the Patriots. Bills at Commanders. Bills are six and a half point favorites on the road. That's a lot of points. I would take the Commanders to cover in this game because I actually think mm-hmm. this would be closer than it looks on paper. But I'm still taking the Bills to win. I think that they've got they they kind of figured a couple things out against the Raiders last week. I feel the exact same way. I don't know if Washington can win it, but I think they can lose this game by less than a touchdown. Eric Bieniemy in that offense with Sam Howell, I hate to say it, folks, but they're cooking down in Washington. They figured yeah. something out. Terry McLaurin, I've been calling him probably the most underappreciated offensive player in the league. And Brian Robinson Jr. at running back, they're figuring some stuff out. If Even if Washington doesn't win it, they'll keep it close. I, I agree here. An AFC South showdown. The Houston Texans go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars lost last week, but they're eight and a half point favorites at home against the Texans. I'm taking the Jaguars, but mm, I, I might pick the Texans to cover here. I'm going to go with Jacksonville straight up. These games, normally AFC South, they can tend to get lopsided one way or another. They do. It, it's pointing toward Jacksonville for me. I think Houston still has some issues that they're trying to point out. One of them is on offense. In Jacksonville right now, I think the way that offense is working, once they get into a rhythm, they're really tough to slow down. So I'll take the Jaguars. Absolutely here. And it, one of those old, one of those weird rivalries because one city took another city's football team, the Baltimore <laughs> Ravens host the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Baltimore, of course, lost the Colts to Indianapolis way back when. So you'll, you'll just see Indy. You won't see the Colts on their scoreboard. A lot of, a lot of old school hatred there, but the Bravens are eight and a half point favorites over the Colts at home. And listen, I, 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 I kind I kind of agree. I think that, uh, um, I think that there's, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot for the, the Colts to clean up. Anthony Richardson was in the, was in the concussion protocol protocol, um, you know, early, early this week, uh, I think it's even as recent as Wednesday. I'm still, we still, again, we're recording early Thursday, so we're not sure what the total update is there. But I think the Colts just have a lot to work on, whereas the Ravens, they're very much on a moving train that they've had for quite some time. I'm going to go kind of against the grain here, and this has nothing to do with Anthony Richardson. I got two words for you, Chris. Minshew mania. Oh, no. Don't I, you hit me with I the think Minshew I, mustache. I, I think at the very least, I think at the very least, the Colts can cover eight points or eight okay, and a half. Okay, it's I a lot of points. I agree. I, eight and a half is a lot, even for the Colts on the road in Baltimore. I think I think Gardner Minshew could keep them in this game, even if they can't win it. Long live the air raid. Give me the Colts. 
Long live the air raid. This is an interesting matchup. The Falcons at the Lions. Lions at home is a three-point favorite. We know that the home team gets three points you know, in, in, in the betting. So this is kind of a toss-up for mm-hmm. Vegas right now. Woo. You know, this may sound crazy, but I'm going with the Falcons. They just beat the It's not crazy. The, it's, it's, it's not, right? I'm not crazy. No, They're crazy. I, I'm taking the Falcons on the road. I think that I think that B. John Robinson has sparked something with this team. I think the defense is playing, making some interesting plays right now. And I'm still not sold exactly who the Lions are. Neither. I mean, I'm not sold too too much on the Falcons either. But I just feel the the Falcons when I watch them a little bit more than the Lions right now. I, I was a kneecap biter fan coming into the season. I had the Lions picked to win the NFC North for the record, but I don't think they win this game. I think B. John Robinson has has gotten this offense in a good direction. I think Desmond Ritter is doing better than he's getting credit for. I think people are I agree. too hard on him. I think he's done a really good job of minimizing his mistakes and being pretty efficient. And that Falcons defense is sneaky good. They are. They've gotten really, they've gotten a lot better really quickly. I like Atlanta on the road plus three. I like it. Another NFL, uh, NFC team, NFC South team, excuse me, that uh, has a has a good defense. It's not sneaky good. It's just straight up good. It's the Saints, and they're on the road yeah. against the Packers, but the Packers are one-and-a-half-point favorites, but I'm taking the Saints, baby. That defense looks legit. They're getting after it, and the Packers' defense has been struggling. I know Jordan Love has been impressive to start, but I'm taking the Saints. I think that they're just going to be that much better of a defense, and Derek Carr will do enough on offense to get them over the hump. And the Saints have done that thing where they're like, they're not really blowing teams out, but they're staying in games or they're winning them really tight. However, Aaron Jones, I think, will probably play in this game for Green Bay. It sounds like he's going to be in that game. Him and A.J. Dillon have been really good in the run game. And Jordan Love's done a pretty good job of getting the running backs involved in the passing game. One and a half for Green Bay. I think they can overcome that at home. So I got the Packers. I got you. The Dolphins hosting the Broncos. Last of our one o'clock games here. The Dolphins are six and a half point favorites. I'm taking that in the points. I know that Russell Wilson played a little bit better last week, but I just I don't believe in anything that Denver's selling me right now. Denver has bit me twice in games Ooh. this season. Ooh. And the, the Dolphins offense is really, really good. I, I thought New England did as much as they could to slow them down. But then when they tried to hit the pass away, Miami just ran the ball. And we almost forgot, hey, Miami can run the ball too. So whatever Denver's going to throw at him, I think Miami will have an answer for him. I like the Dolphins by at least a touchdown too. Four four o'clock games now. The Seahawks host the Panthers. The Panthers without Bryce Young, that's going to sting for them. They got Andy Dalton playing. I'm going with the Seahawks just winning on the, win, win, winning on the West Coast here. Yeah, the Seahawks are pretty good. They're, they're really good when they're another team that when they don't make mistakes, they're pretty good. I like the run game. Geno Smith is not going to light you up, but he will make a play here and there that he's expected to make. I think the Seahawks win this by a couple possessions. The widest spread, tied for the widest spread. Actually, these are back-to-back games that are the widest spread of, 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 the, of the weekend. First, it's the Chiefs at home against the Bears. The Chiefs are 12 and a half point favorites over the Bears. Listen, the Bears have been terrible. But the Chiefs haven't lit it up yet. Like their offense has not like exploded yet. They lost to the Lions. They barely eked it out last week against the Jaguars. I'm taking the Chiefs, but I'm a little skeptical about the 12 and a half points. I don't know about you, Josh. I got a nice fun stat for you. Okay. The Bears offense has scored 37 points in two games this season. Hmm. You know who else has scored 37 points on offense in two games this season? Who? Kansas City. They have scored the exact same number of points. All right, then pick them. Pick Chicago. I dare you. I I got the Bears covering the 12 and a half. Oh, I don't think they'll oh, win it. They won't okay. win it. I was just but checking. They'll cover. I, 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 Kansas City should win this game handily. I just don't think that they'll score enough to beat the Bears by more than 12 points. So I got the All Bears right. covering. Not winning, but covering the 12 and a half. I, I can clarify. buy that. I can I buy that. And I, can, I, I think I, I even get I even get behind that. I think the Bears find a way to cover. But the team I don't think that will find a way to cover is the Arizona Cardinals because they're at home oh, and they're 12 and a half point dogs to the Dallas Cowboys. That is going to be a this is the way we mop the floor type of game. I think the Cowboys <laughs> are just going to I feel bad for what's about to happen to Josh Dobbs and James Conner, two former Steelers who are over there yeah. and two guys I had good relationships with in the locker room. Nice guys to talk to. Man, I just I think the I think the Cowboys are going to uh do some terrible things to these Cardinals. Poor Josh Dobbs. Like just could not happen to a better guy. It just I feel terrible for him. Dallas is they they are the best team right now that personifies what I like to see in a football team winning games. They run the ball well, they play good defense, and they win the turnover battle. And they're gonna do this in spades. I, I got Dallas in this one. 
We skipped Sunday night football because we're going to do that in the final segment. But Monday night football, once again, two games this week. How do you feel about the two-game Monday night football slate, by the way? It's fun if you have the split screen and you're interested in both. It's just the Monday night game selection the past couple of years has been so hit or miss. I so agree. it's hard to get into both if they're not good matchups. Yeah, like like it was funny. People were saying, like, listen, not even the Saints and Panthers fans want to watch the Saints and Panthers play exactly in, in, in that game. But I think these will actually be two very interesting games to watch. First, it's the Eagles at Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are four and a half half point dogs to the Eagles, even though the Buccaneers are at home. I'm putting my upset alert on. The Buccaneers Ooh. are getting a dub at home against the Eagles. Listen, the Eagles are going to be fine this year, but they haven't looked as fluid as I thought they'd be to start this season, and the Buccaneers look good. Baker Mayfield understands how to hit Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. This defense, Vita Vey is a beast up in that front. Oh, he's so I'm, I'm taking the Buccaneers. I think that they're going to find a way. They'll, they'll definitely cover in this game, and I'm picking them to win. Anybody who said before the season that Baker Mayfield would start the season as one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the league, if you claim that, I know you are lying. But that is the you case. You are a right liar. Now. Baker Mayfield has he's been pretty good in a couple in the first couple of games. I pointed this out to, to my guys on Fourth Down and Steel City podcast. I said, you know who Baker Mayfield looks like right now throwing to Mike Evans? Kind of reminds me of those AM days 10 years ago when Johnny Manziel was throwing to him. Uh, it, it has that flavor yeah. to it. And I already told you long live the air raid earlier, but I'm not going to go back to that. But there's there's a connection there that looks eerily familiar to about a decade ago. That's all I'll point out. With that said, I'm going with the Eagles. I still like that defensive front. I, I, you know me. I love my Georgia boys, and Philly got a slew of them. Jalen Hurts has still not had that game yet that looks like he did last year. This might be the time where that happens. I'm going to take the Eagles in this one. I hear you. Last Monday night football game here. Rams at Bengals. Super Bowl rematch. Uh, the Bengals open as three and a half point favorites at home. But I got to say, the Rams have surprised me. They looked good against the Seahawks, and they put up a really good fight against the Niners. I'm taking the Rams in this one because the Bengals are 0-2. I know it thinks it's unthinkable for the Bengals, who have been this, this the, the, the darlings of the NFL for the last two years, to go 0-3. But Joe Burrow is still kind of – like he, he's wearing the sleeve on his cap at practice. He, did, he hasn't really looked good yet this season. I'm going with Los Angeles being able to, to do enough to win this game. Shout out to Puka Nakua, who's going to put up some numbers in this game. I I had my reservations about Cincinnati coming into this season, not because of Joe Burrow, but because of Cincinnati's defense. They gave up 24 to Cleveland in week one, and they gave up 27 to Baltimore in week two. They're going to give up 20-plus in this one to the Rams, and the Rams scored 20-plus against San Francisco. Give me the Rams in this one. I think the Rams cover. That's my upset alert. I think they cover and win in Cincinnati. And the Bengals, Chris, the Bengals will be 3-0. and No one saw that you coming. Mean, you mean 0-3? Oh, 0-3. Oh, I'm sorry. The Bengals will be 0-3. No one saw that coming. No I, one. Unbelievable. But I think it's happened. I think it happens. It, it, it happens, and there's going to be some uh, alarms being raised in Cincinnati. We'll get to the Steelers' picks, our keys for the game, our biggest turning point, and our final prediction for Steelers Raiders on, on, on Sunday night football in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. We'll get to all that in a minute here. But first, before we do that, got to remind you, this show is also sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize picks is the most fun that anyone can have winning up to 25 times their money this football season. All you have to do is pick two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and you can place your entry. Prize picks is the fun and easy new daily fantasy game that everyone needs to start playing right now. If you're big into fantasy sports, this is a way to get your daily fix by selecting individual player projections and making a simple decision whether they'll get more or less of a set number of points, rebounds, touchdowns, yards gained, sacks, whatever. It's simple. Pick two to six players. If you think you have a beat on their day in fantasy, choose whether they'll get more or less on a certain stat and make as many entries in prize picks as you want you can pick up to 25 you can go up to 25 times your money pick two to six players for example if you're a Steelers fan this weekend if you want to bet on TJ Watt having more than one and a half sacks while also put it saying that George Pickens will get more than half a touchdown you can just say more or less and you can win money off if you're right and you're not competing against thousands of others you're not competing against an entire slew of people you're just trying to beat prize picks and guess right on your more or less picks prize picks also offers weekly promotions that lead to big payouts like taco tuesday where each tuesday prize prize picks discounts select player projections up to 25 percent to provide even more value prize picks includes also the nfl nba mlb nhl college sports and so much more demo the prize picks app today or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and day, play daily fantasy sports prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl and use code 
code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's prizepick.com slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter with Josh Taylor of 93.7 The Fan and KDK TV. Josh, let's get into the Steelers game. If the Steelers are going to charge on the path to victory, what is the biggest key that they have to achieve in this game? Being more efficient on offense and not turning the ball over in really inopportune times. There's been back-to-back situations now where they're turning over the ball in the first quarter, really inaccurate play, like, from Kenny Pickett, I think that's a problem. The run game hasn't been as efficient as it should be. They have to have a much stronger showing in the first quarter. And they have to have a stronger showing in the fourth quarter. Those have been their worst two quarters of offense this season, and that's not a new thing. Over the past couple of years, their worst two quarters on offense have been in the first quarter and in the fourth quarter. That has to be the thing that they fix, and it's got to be as far as running the football better, and as we talked about earlier, getting Pat Fryermuth involved or even Allen Robinson in the middle of the field, finding a way to get somebody. I don't care if it's the running backs, but somebody has to be able in the passing game to be able to manipulate that middle part of the field after you get the run game going. They do that, I think they can win this game. I think the defense will take care of itself. The thing about the defense that I find interesting, uh, actually before I get to the defense, I agree. They've got to be able to establish this on offense. The the Raiders are a team that they have a great pass rusher in Max Crosby, but Chandler Jones is going through something. I don't know what yeah, he's going it's through. Bad. He's, he's dealing with some mental health issues. They've got their rookie Tyree Wilson, who was a top 10 pick this year. And he so-so, if you listen to your boy Q, uh, who was uh, our Locked On Raiders host, who was on our Crossover Thursday episode. Go watch that if you want his breakdown on, on that pass rushing duo. But I think the key to the offense is they're going to play a little bit softer coverages hit your spots, hit your throws. This is a game where Kenny Pickett can get back on. He's not playing an aggressive defense like the Browns or the Niners. This is his chance to, to do that. Now, I think that, as we said before, Pat Fryman is the key there. On defense, I actually think there's a really interesting form of the, that, that the Steelers can solve a few things this week. One, the Raiders have not been able to run the ball yet, and they have Josh Jacobs. There's some problems there. The Steelers have to keep that the case. They have to make this the game that the run defense looks fixed and and fine and is not giving up over 100 yards per game the way they have the last two games. This has to be the the, the, the game where that, where that starts. If they do that, if they force the third and longs, Jimmy Garoppolo has not been sacked yet this season, which this needs to be the game that you get after him that you change that that you hit him in the pocket you make him feel your presence you get a you get you get a you get multiple sacks in this game and and create some of those turnovers that'll be the key on defense to cause problems for these raiders stop the run and then let that pass rush get after because then Jimmy Garoppolo if he has to hold on to the ball and look downfield that's where you're going to have your time to get after him and I think that there's going to be some really good opportunities for that he's got three picks already this season and here's a weird number for the raiders they have four turnovers already on offense. They haven't forced one yet this season on defense. Mm. That's, that's a little odd, but three interceptions for Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm with you. They can force him to make some mistakes, get some more of those turnovers that they got against Cleveland. It puts him in a really good spot on offense. Absolutely. All right, Josh, before you give your final score, I want to hear your turning point of the game, where you think things will turn in the favor of the team that you're picking to win, and then give your final score and how it happens. Turning point of the game will be the Steelers forcing a turnover, maybe two. There's going to be a, a point where the Steelers, not even necessarily needing to get a stop, but I think they'll be opportunistic enough. They'll force a turnover, maybe on the short side of the field. I don't know if it'll be another one that turns into six, like they got two last week against Cleveland, but I think it will be one that at least gives them an opportunity to score, probably with a short field. And this offense, I think, will actually be in gear enough to cash in, and I think that'll be where we see that gap start to widen between the two teams in this game. Absolutely. What's your final score prediction? I described potentially last week's game as Bubba Sparks ugly against <laughs> Cleveland. I don't think it's going to be that bad. It, this could have ugly, like ugly tendency to it. I will say the Steelers. I, I will say the Steelers' offense actually cracks twenty in this game on their own. I'll go with twenty three to twenty in this one. I think the Steelers will win a close one. It probably might not be as close as the score dictates, but I will say twenty three to twenty in this one. Bubba Sparks, ugly. You're crazy. I knew um, you'd like that, though. That was actually pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> Miss New Booty. Uh, but so I, got, <laughs> I just had to get that in there. Um, but 
I, I have my turning point actually being on offense. I, I think oh. that the turning point will be third quarter. Steelers might come out slow. They, I think it's going to be a little close. But I think what happens is Pat Firemuth gets hit over the middle with a pass that goes down the seam, make, turns it into a big play, and is able to is able to kind of stretch the field. And that puts some confidence behind Kenny Pickett. It also puts the linebackers on notice, and it puts the Raiders in a tough spot. And he does that two or three times, and then all of a sudden those linebackers, they'll stop flying up to the line of scrimmage. They'll start being waiting. They're like, oh, are they going to hit us back here? And then Najee Harris, Jalen Warren in that ground game start to take over, and that's what has to happen in this game. But I think it all opens up by taking advantage of that of the, of that weakness that they have at linebacker and covering tight ends. We'll see if that's the case here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. We'll be breaking it down. Josh, thanks so much for joining us here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. On social media, real simple. Josh Taylor HD, if you're watching, it's right there below. That's the best place to find me. Uh, as far as work goes, TV, KDKA TV, uh, usually on Saturdays, sometimes on Fridays. Uh, Radio 93.7 The Fan made my return from my few months off uh, for paternity leave, made made my return this past Sunday. Probably trying to work a a Sunday here and there moving forward. We'll see how that goes. Also, um, really, really happy happy and excited about this. As a part of 93.7 The Fan, now part of Fourth Down in the Steel City Podcast with Chris Mack. My old producer from Sunday mornings, Greg Finley, he's producing the show for us. We are putting out content pretty much every day. You can listen to him in the Odyssey app just like the Locked on Steelers podcast. Also, Sunday night, after this game is over, we will be live on YouTube on the 93.7 The Fan page talking about this game. Uh, Chris is going to bring the drinks. I'm going to have the snacks, and we're going to bring a whole bunch of discussion about this game. So it'll be fun. We did it last uh, Monday night after the Cleveland game. We're going to do it again Sunday night after Vegas. So join us over on YouTube on the 93.7 The Fan page right after this game is over because we're talking about it. Absolutely. Check out Josh and all his great work that he does. Thanks again for tuning into the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, post-gazette.com. You can also find me here on the Locked on Steelers podcast every day, Monday through Friday, breaking down your Pittsburgh Steelers on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes. And if you want to support us even more, give us five stars on our on our, on our our Apple Podcasts rating uh, with a positive comment. You do both at the same time. You get a shout out at the end of the show. Thanks again to everybody for hopping in for joining us here we'll see what happens with the picks and we'll be back late sunday night early monday morning with a lockdown steelers episode breaking down what happened in steelers raiders we'll see you then